G'day everyone. I uh, thought I'd talk to you about a recent uh, announcement from Sony about their global shutters. And then it got me thinking whether it would be possible to have those global shutters in the A7000 or the A7S III. And I thought I'd have a discussion about that. Uh, but before we do, I'm actually going to discuss with you what is a global shutter and the benefits from it. So we can have a look at that because a lot of people do ask me about that. But the rumor itself was announced here that uh, stunning Sony officially announces a, a new generation of global shutter. Uh, for APS-C and Micro Four Third sensors. So that's what they're actually saying at the moment. Now I'm gonna to talk to you about that uh, when we go through what, what is a global shutter shortly and whether I think they can put it into uh, these uh, new cameras that are, gonna, are going to be coming out. But it is certainly an interesting scenario. Uh, and so I thought we'd discuss that too. Um, but basically, when you're dealing with global shutters, they, they act completely different to today's shutters. And, I, and there's some great articles that I've found uh, here that I can take you through, which uh, shows here. And this is actually from um, red.com. And I'll put the links for these down below so that you can actually um, see them. And basically what they're showing is that I'm only going to talk about the electronic uh, sensor here. So if you're shooting with the electronic side of the sensor, because if you're shooting mechanical, it does use this type of a um, roller or rotary shutter as compared to a sensor-based shutter which moves up and down. Now, if you look down here, this explains it very, very well in the way that they actually work. And you can see that what it does, it exposes, this is how our cameras actually are now. You can see that it exposes in rows as it comes down until it gets to the end. And then you'll see a dark exposure. Now, I'll show you another version of this in a minute which sort of might make it even clearer to you. Um, and if you look down here, um, basically this one here is a global shutter, which is closed, it's open and, and it exposes in one go, and then it's closed again. So there's none of this drawing down the line, line by line or row by row, to get your exposure. It's basically off, on, off. Uh, and that's how that works. And the difference is quite remarkable when you're looking at this, because if you look at this example that they're actually showing here, this is how your normal cameras would work now because uh, of the shutter that they're using, which is not a global shutter. And this is the one basically if it was shot with a global shutter. So you can see there's a massive difference because this captures where it would do your rows at a time. And so it misses those ones, whereas this exposes and you get the whole lot in one go. Another area as well where it really shows is if you're using flash. Um, so strobes, you can get these lines and you can also have to, you have sync problems with your flash. That's why most flashes are linked to uh, 200th of a second or, or 250th, uh, uh, 1 200th of a second and 1 250th of a second. With a global shutter, again, it's just one exposure. So, excuse me, so it eliminates all of that, uh, those issues. Now to show you that uh, even better, this other article, um, which is from the beat, uh, premiumbeat.com, uh, it shows you what rolling shutter will also do in stills and also in video. Um, because this is the type of thing that, you, that you'll get. And if you look here, you can see what's happening here, that the, ro the rotor blades are very, very still. So that would be what a global shutter would give you. You can still do this too if you are working in uh, mechanical shutter and you have your shutter speed incredibly fast. But this is just a general how uh, the difference between sh a shutter and a global shutter. Uh, the bottom one here obviously is what we'll get, which is like a rolling shutter. So this is the rolling shutter effect. And it's particularly bad when you're looking at it with things like golfers and stuff like that. Uh, and that's where um, the Sony A9 has such an advantage because the, the sensor itself is so fast that it does eliminate most of those rolling shutter issues. But you're talking about a state-of-the-art sensor here and the next one probably will have uh, moved to this global shutter and then so it will be eliminated completely. But in video, it's I'll show you the exact problem if you're dealing with video. Um, if we look down here, you'll see if I press this uh, to play it, um, so you can see the difference. So the one on the top there is a global shutter. You can see that the blades are very, very straight. The bottom one is showing you the rolling shutter. Uh, and that's the issue with uh, using your conventional sensors like what we're using today. So it really does make a massive difference. And it, for instance, if, if you hold your camera um, and you pan fairly quickly, like if you actually pan fairly quickly like this, 
um, you will see rolling shutter. The buildings or, or signposts will, will be on an angle because the sensors just aren't quick enough to do that. So these later sensors basically are going to get rid of that complete um, rolling shutter that you'll see there. And so that, that new announcement that I told you about from Sony is really interesting because they're saying that they've basically developed ones now for APS-C cameras um, <clears throat> and for micro four thirds. Now, will it this appear in the next A7000 or the A7S III? Well, it's possible if the cameras were delayed long enough, uh, but I not I don't think that's going to happen. So I don't think we're going to see them in these latest versions of the cameras. the The issue is, and like I said, I'm not going to go through that whole article with you. I'll paste that down below so you can read it. Um, but the problem is at the moment those sensors that Sony have developed are for the four three ratio. So it's not going to fit the video very well at all due to the 16-9 ratio uh, that you usually shoot in video. So it's not going to fit that format yet at this stage. So I think there's probably still going to be some development done on this, but it certainly is exciting. And it definitely points to the fact that I do believe that Sony are going to come out with uh, probably uh, this global shutter first, and it could be in uh, the A7S III if it's delayed long enough, or it may be in their next cameras that they bring, bring out, like something like an A9 uh, II or something like that, whatever is released sometime next year. Because clearly now that Sony are developing these sensors, it's only a matter of time before that happens. You can also see how much better it is if you've got a sensor that does work very fast, and that's the advantage of something like the A9, where it does get rid of that rolling shutter uh, very, very successfully, but it's nowhere near as good as what a global shutter will give you. Um, so I think things are exciting. I'm just not sure when we'll actually see these in the latest cameras, uh, but I don't think it's going to be too far off. Um, so stay tuned. Uh, let me know what you think about that down below and I'll catch you all again soon for the next video. Bye for now.